Today we're going to check out the most insane engine out job we've ever done. Let's get started. So for any of you that watch Hoovy's Garage, which probably most of you do, this is actually Hoovy's 2014 Maserati Giblet, or Ghibli, Giblet Gravy, something, anything, something like that anyways. This one he ordered and it was kind of a big scam job. Supposedly it had some issues, you know, okay, he bought it. When it arrived, the engine was toast. They had overheated the living hell out of it so bad that the actual block is warped. It literally is a turkey. It's a cooked, it's done. It's cooked. So that's kind of where the giblet comes through. It's kind of a funny little thing. We've done parts full of carts in the shop many times in the past for the past few years. We've done a Range Rover, we've done some of Bill's cars, some, a whole bunch of cars. But today we're gonna to show you the worst we've ever seen. Daniel Sun did the job. He's pulled many, many engines in his life. And he said, Wizard, this is the stupidest one. It's absolutely dumb how much parts and pieces and brackets and bolts and just to get the engine out the bottom. Well, you're going to see today we have carts and carts and carts full of parts. Let's get the hood open. Here we are with a giant hole in the engine bay which is designed to come out the bottom as a unit, the cradle, it comes out the bottom. We can see though, there's lots of things similar to any other car in this engine bay. We can see the steering shaft over there. That's just like any other car. It'd be difficult to get to with the engine in the car, but pretty easy now. We can see the expansion valve, heater core, there's our brake booster, again, just like any other car. And over on the passenger side, we can see the air intake for the blower motor where it sucks in air. Again, that's pretty much like any other car. Here we have the radiator, and if you guys watched our previous video about maintenance, you'll know that the previous owner, before Hoovy owned this, was really stupid. And they mixed green coolant with Maserati OEM coolant, and it turned into basically like grape jelly. It turned really, really bad. So whatever issue I had with the blown head gasket was compounded even further by clogging things up. We're gonna try to flush the radiator, but it might be that we have to replace it. And it very likely that may be what we have to do is put a new radiator in here. The heater core, we're hoping that we can flush it out and see that water flows freely out of both ends, reverse back and forth. Otherwise, the dash will have to come out because it'll too be plugged with jello or jelly. But I'm thinking we can flush that out. It should be okay. So when this car arrived, Hoovy drove it. It was misfiring really bad. And he, it was spilling coolant. As you can see, the stains were on the engine bay. The white coloration is actually antifreeze from the coolant reservoir that was right here. And it was just spraying everywhere. It was brought up here and we started it up and we could see it was misfiring. One cylinder was dead. And there's a huge story to this even before Hoovy bought it. They ran this thing into the ground really bad. So that's why we have all this taken apart. A lot of the engine bolts and things that go to the transmission can't really even be accessed. And this is the all-wheel drive version. So it's very difficult to split the engine in the car. It's just easier with all the work we have to do. Drop the cradle, get it apart, and you're going to see in a minute why it was so much easier. It was already pretty bad. All the parts that had to come apart just to get the engine out the bottom. Danielson, understandably so, he was complaining a lot through the whole thing. He's like, wizard, I've never seen it this bad. They did not design this to come out very easily. It is just crazy. He finally got it out and started pulling things apart and it was just more parts and parts. Guys, there were so many carts. You, you guys know that we use old TV carts that Mrs. Wizard found at an auction years ago, and the guys love them. They, not only do they work really well for holding parts, but they just really think it's cool about the nostalgia of, I remember when I was in school and we had the TV on the TV cart, and now here's the carts. But anyways, Mrs. Wizard's gonna pan across and show you just how bad this is. There's tons of parts on the floor, and there's tons of carts and they're completely full of parts. Your guy will do this job for 150 bucks? We won't. This is gonna be super expensive. Actually, Hoovy just bought an engine for this thing, a good used one, 
just before we even done any of this, just buying the engine, we're already at five grand just to get the engine. This is going to be super expensive. We're going to go through each car and show you all the different parts, what had to come apart. We know that you guys love the carnage. You like, it's like, oh my God. It's kind of like walking in on a loved one during surgery. You're like, oh my God, can you put that back together? Is that going to work? Or... So without further ado, let's start at the Cradle of Love. Well, you guys know that song, don't you? Maybe you're not old enough. I don't know. They're not old enough. You're too much of a boomer for them, Dave. I'm not a boomer. Sure. Gramps. Okay. I'll start over there. So here we are with the actual cradle, which houses or holds the front suspension, the engine, all that is combined into one unit. And you can see these holes right here. There's four of them and the whole thing comes down as long as you have all the hoses and things unhooked. That's why I mean it's so easy. Once you get all the things, hoses and wires unhooked, it's four big bolts and the whole thing drops out. So you would think, well, that's easy. And it usually is. But Danielson discovered they really didn't have serviceability in mind when they made this engine or designed this power package because there were things coming apart. You had, oh, I have to take this apart. Hold on. No, I have to get this apart. And it was just crazy. Finally, he was like, okay, finally I get to drop this thing out. But this engine right here, this dead little engine, actually sits right here. You can see the motor mounts actually just sits right here. Amongst all these tons of hoses and pipes, there's the actual timing cover that goes to the front of the engine. And there's a CV shaft for the front wheel drive of the all-wheel drive. So once we got the cradle out, which it came with the engine and transmission all installed as one unit sitting right there, then we're able to access all the bolts for the bell housing and all the different things and wiring and hoses and it just came apart so easy. It totally made sense. So this was connected to that as one unit and they were sitting right here on top of this cradle. And you would think, well, man, that's so many parts. Just wait, we haven't even got started. There's more. So before we dive into the carts, let's head on over to the pile of panels and plastic and stuff that had to come off just to get the engine out. So you can't really drop the power pack out the bottom until you first have the exhaust removed. You don't want it just hanging on the ground and breaking things. So it's been carefully removed and placed over here. All these plastic panels, again, it's not going to be hurting for them being in a pile like that. They're just underbody panels that get dirty and there's a lot of splash shields. There's a drive shaft. There's several paces right here that are in this pile. You can see the radiator fan. Basically a small mountain of parts before you can even get the engine out. Oh, and don't forget to take the front wheels off either, which are there on the floor as well. Let's start with our first cart. Some of the parts that are on these carts will not be going on to the new engine or the good used engine because it already includes those parts with the engine. We just took them apart so that we can do some discovery and kind of for filming to show you guys what the heck happened to this thing. So we'll start on the top and we've got a long ways to go. So without further ado with this, let's get started. So here's a turbo. Uh, but Wizard, where's the second one? Yes, it is a twin turbo. There's the second one over there. There's some hoses, airflow sensors, some duct work, some turbo actuators, heat shields. We probably will be reusing the airflow sensor and duct work. I don't know if the new engine comes with turbos or not. If it doesn't, these are still good, but we'll have, we don't know until it arrives, but we have the parts here. On the second level, we have heater hoses, heat shields, there's a power steering pump, there's an alternator, there's a throttle body, ignition coils, some cam actuator magnets, AC compressor, and some sensors, some pulleys, again, some of these things will be reused, some of them will not, we don't know. The engine did say does not come with accessories, which means power steering pump and all those things like that. So if they don't, we have them here. Those, I don't think those were bad. We'll check those before we put them in, but. Then we have level three of the first cart. There's a motor mount bracket, a water pump, a flywheel, or flex plate actually, main pulley. There's valve covers with the cams sitting in them and an intake manifold or an upper plenum anyways. So that's only one cart. 
We have many more to go. Let's head on over to the second one. Many of you may wonder, how do you keep track of all the bolts, which there are tons of them? Danielson actually places them in little groups, and he has actually some writing I'll show you. You can see on the front here, he has listed where they go. And it's very, very handy that way. He knows, oh, these go here, these go there and whatnot. If it's a really big job, he'll actually draw boxes around them and, and kind of decipher what went where. But when you take something this big apart, as long as you have a general idea, these were exhaust manifold bolts. Okay, well they all are in the same group. I know what those all go to. It makes it a lot easier. Now let's go down to level two. We have air boxes. We have some surround like foam, some panels, Lug bolts, those over there, I can tell you the really long bolts are some of the four bolts that hold the cradle in place. Very big Torx bolts, external Torx. We got a radiator hose to the thermostat, which we will not be reusing with the issues that we had with this engine. There's horns and another bracket. So you're gonna see a theme, anything that's gotten hot, we're not going to be reusing anything to do with the cooling system as far as temperature regulation and things. But wait, there's more, level three. There's the upper air boxes, air filters, engine cover, and that's pretty much it for level three. And then on the next cart, we have a very unfixable problem. The owner of the car. What does that mean? <laughs> yeah, there's no fixing this. No, absolutely not. Yeah. Holy crap. You got scammed pretty hard on this one. You think? Yeah. Yeah, and I'm still waiting for the engine, although they did say it's the next one out at the salvage yard, so mm -hmm. hopefully it gets here soon so you, uh, Daniel and you don't forget how to put it back together. Holy crap. It's a lot. Uh, yeah. Uh, Daniel's son's actually mentioning when he took this apart, he's like, they had no, uh, no design of serviceability when they made this. They were just slap the parts together and they didn't care. I believe it. So, yeah, you've worked your way down a couple of carts and then to the screws loose here, and then there's all these nuts and <laughs> screws loose over here. Tons, yeah. Whoa. Well, sorry. Yeah, I mean, it is what it is, but uh, we're just showing them that obviously this kind of work's not going to be done for 1200 bucks. It's, it's not? No. When we mentioned that you bought the engine, just the engine alone was like five grand. Ships, yes. Ship. Mm -hmm. Just the engine. We haven't tallied up any labor or any other thermostats, belts, hoses, coolant, all those different things. So like twelve hundred and fifty bucks? It might be triple that. Or more. Mm. Well, and then we got to get the smell out of the inside, too. Jenny, did you even do, you're not going to do an interior tour, I assume. Right? I, I have not, but we have a plan for maybe the interior when we get this all put back together oh, for you. Okay, we have, wonderful. That'll be in another video, but we have a plan of attack for that. Okay, well, have fun going through all of this mess. Mm hmm. Oh, my God. What have I done? Oh. <laughs> So now that Hoovy's gone and he's moved on down the road, he definitely got a really th good thrill out of seeing all these parts. He was like, my goodness, this is insane. And yes, it is insane. So we're down to what? We did the cradle and then, so that's one, two, three. This is the fourth cart full of parts. Here's our headlights. There is some brackets up there and some plastic mud flaps and some clips. On level two, we have a cooler. Here's the reservoir I talked about that was spewing everywhere. It was literally just spewing all over the top. So much pressure was building up. There's our wiper transmission or linkage assembly. Here is some of the air intake for the HVAC system. Then we have a wheel liner and looks like some airbox vents or something, some kind of air deflectors. So here we have the cylinder heads off the engine, which obviously are not going on to the new engine. These things are probably warped to kingdom come. But you can see what the cams were and all the pieces and parts. Let me go ahead and flip this cart around. We can see that this cylinder was the one that was blown. You can see right here where the coolant was going right in. And you can also tell because these have a black coating on them and this one's steam cleaned on the inside, nice and clean. It was literally being steam cleaned, literally, with antifreeze under pressure. So we did take a straight edge to this and checked. It is definitely warped very badly. These could be probably reused if they were resurfaced, but the engine comes with its own head, so we don't need to. 
On level two, we have like a purge solenoid, it looks like, some little cover for the high pressure fuel pump, high pressure fuel lines, power steering reservoir, a lot of uh, cam caps and bolts and things, and a vacuum pump, a lot of hoses and O2 sensors and wires. Some stuff of that will be reused, some of it will not. And then on level three, we have the catalytic converters. No, not the Cadillac converters. These aren't Cadillacs. This is Maserati. It's catalytic converters. I bring that up because Facebook just had a meme where someone posted some catalytic converters and it said Cadillac converters for sale. They were off of some Ford Focus or something. No, it's not Cadillac. It's catalytic. Anyways, so there's cart number. Where are we at now, Mrs. Wizard? That One, was four. Two, three, four. Five counting the cradle. This is five. So now we have one more, six. Here we have the main engine wiring harness and the fuel rails for the high pressure system with the injectors. We'll be reusing these likely. I don't know. We'll have to see if the engine comes with those or not. We'll have to see. But if we do reuse these, we'll put new Teflon seals on them and, and they'll be fine. They worked. So many times we have people call and say, what? I'd like to get a quote for an engine replacement on the Jaguar or a Maserati or a Porsche or something like that. And we tell them 10, 12, 14 grand cost of a used engine or a new engine, depends on what it is. Why is it so high? That's what we hear a lot. And then we explain it to them and they're like, yeah, we asked the dealer and a few other shops and they were even higher than you guys were. Why is it so high? Well, you shouldn't expect people to do all that for a thousand bucks. No one's going to do that. Hoovy also understands that as he was just here. He knows. He was just joking, $12.50. He knows it's going to be expensive. So there we have it. Six carts full of parts. We might could remove one of them for some of the engine parts that are not going back on to the new engine that shows up. But still, even at five carts full of parts to do this job, it's a lot. Think of you as the technician who has to remember all these parts going back on. Where do they go? Which sequence do they go in? Should I do this first or that first? If I do this first, I might have to remove it again because I got it out of sequence. It can get very stressful and very frustrating. Definitely wanted to do a video for you guys to show you just how crazy it can be and how this was one of the most insane engine removal jobs we've done in a long time, if not the most insane. We mentioned the interior when Hoovy was here. It smells like someone took 500 rotten cigars and just dumped them in the interior. It smells terrible. That's why I'm not doing an interior review. Yes, no one wants to sit in there. It's really bad, it reeks. But we do have a plan. We're gonna show you guys in a future video a plan of attack of what we're gonna to do to take care of that. We're still waiting on the engine to arrive. As Hoovy said, they're kind of slow right now getting the engine to him. But as soon as it arrives, we'll figure out what we're going to reuse, what we're not going to reuse, and then this thing starts going back together with new belts, all kinds of different hoses and things. Just going to put new because it's been under a lot of stress from it overheating. Oh, and by the way, the engine block that you guys saw in the maintenance video we just put out, we show you how there was gel. It's all in the water jackets, it's all in the coolant passages. And we put a straight edge across the deck surface on the individual cylinders, which they're open deck. And that's terrible when you overheat them because we could rock the straight edge back and forth over the cylinders. It's shot. Could someone rebuild it? Maybe. I wouldn't trust it because it's been mistreated so bad before Hoovy bought it. Whatever went wrong with this, I really wish the owner would have just pulled over, stop, call a tow truck, and maybe get some new head gaskets or whatever, get it fixed. But they didn't. They just drove it until it literally just ruined the motor. Regardless of what happened and how Hoovy got scammed, the only thing we can do going forward is fix it. When these things are fixed, they're not a $5,000 car. They can be 20, 30, they can be pretty high. They're still worth money. It's not worth just throwing the car away. The rest of the car is still usable and workable. If we can get the engine replaced, get the interior taken care of, it'll be a good car again. Definitely wanted to get a video to show you guys just how insane these carts full of parts are. I walk through the shop sometimes and I go deliver some parts to the guys or talk to the guys and I walk by all these carts and I'm like, I still, it just shocks me every time. I can't believe it was this bad to take all this apart. But it is what it is and 
As soon as the engine sh shows up, I'm sure Hoovy will do a video showing it back together again. Check out Hoovy's garage, show the finished product. If you're curious what kind of tools we use in the shop or that Danielson used to do this job, check our Amazon affiliates link in the description below. We get a small cut if you purchase anything, we really appreciate it. Check out Mrs. Wizard's Way, she got some really cool videos going on over there as well. And also hit the subscribe button here because we have many cool videos coming down the pike for you guys. Thanks for watching.